Hi, welcome to another Sporting Communities podcast. Sporting Communities are a community interest company. We are an ethical, non-for-profit organisation, which services range from sports coaching, youth work, mentors and family support. We are a training academy delivering a range of qualifications and we also have art and play services. As you'll know by now, this podcast is aimed at helping people with their mental health. If you are struggling at all, trying to give you a bit of a pick me up. Um, especially as we're coming up towards Christmas now. So we want to get smiles on people's faces. So that's what we're aiming to do today. So if you haven't heard us before, I'm James. I've been with Sporting Communities for a couple of years now, mainly going out into the community and delivering sports sessions. And like I said before, basically trying to put smiles on faces. So that's pretty much my job role, really. This week, I'm joined by the same people. So I've got Ed, Denzel and Martine. So if we can do a quick introduction, starting with you, Ed. Yeah, hi everyone. My name's Ed. Uh, I'm the Derbyshire Development Officer for Sporting Communities. I'm also a badminton coach and personal trainer. I like to get involved in some of the sports sessions you run and try and get you know the young people in the communities we work in more active. Great stuff. And coming to you, Martine. Hi everyone. My name's Martine. I work for Sporting Communities as a community support and engagement worker. I've been working um, since the first lockdown. Um, I'm also a mental health first aider. I work for a mental health charity and I'm a leader in running fitness, which allows me to provide uh, group running sessions. Great stuff. Thank you, Martine. And coming to you, Denzel. Hi, all. Yeah, I'm Denzel. I've been working for sporting communities for a few months now as a youth engagement worker. Um, I'm also a songwriter. I write my own R&B and rap tracks and also songs for song lyrics sorry for other artists um i'm also a professional football coach for Notts county very good i'm interested to know are we releasing a special christmas uh, single this year denzel <laughs> you never know i might be working on it yeah i look forward <laughs> to that one definitely i'm hoping to um, i'm hoping to top mariah carry on the charts yeah there you go there you go yeah. well we'll all get downloading it anyway so that's at least three <laughs> downloads you've got yeah, man, the sporting community's rap is coming, believe me. <laughs> <laughs> Great it stuff. might be the death of me, but we'll see what we can do. <laughs> yeah, we'll see, we'll see. Fantastic. Thank you for that, guys. So um, this week, we are going to cover the topic of Christmas. Um, as you'll know, sort of everything changes week by week with what's going on with the changes with lockdown and then going into the tier system. So we're going to cover the sort of five-day break that we've got with um, the tiered restrictions, um, sort of what that means for us, what it means that we can and can't do, uh, and basically how we feel about it. So for anyone who doesn't know, obviously they're going to have a five-day break around the Christmas period where people can meet up. I believe it's with two different households, so you can have three households meeting up for the five days, but you have to stick to the same households. I believe that should just be in their households rather than actually going out to sort of public settings and bits like that, um, other than potentially parks and bits which are outside. Um, that's as far as I understand it anyway. Um, you can correct me if that's wrong. Um, so basically, I just wanted to get a few opinions on it um, and see basically what we think. So far away, guys. Well, I've, I've spoken to my family um, about what we plan to do over Christmas. And I've come from quite a large family. I've got three sisters and they've all got children of their own. And, and um, you know, Garrett, we usually meet up with my husband's family as well over Christmas. But this year we've all been speaking and, and personally, we don't want to start mixing too much. So we've decided to stick it with our own families at home. So this year I'll be spending it at home with my husband and my children yeah okay i think i think that's sensible i think i think part of the thing with all of this is they they do kind of bank on the fact that obviously no, nobody wants to make their own family members ill and no one wants to put their own family at risk so at the end of the day if you feel like you are putting someone at risk you're not going to want to do it are you so I, I think there's tons of people in, in exactly the same sort of position as you martin and they're doing exactly the same thing as you so I think as it, obviously you want to be trying to spend Christmas with someone if you can. Um, and the fact that obviously you can spend that with your husband and kids at home, I think that's great. Um, we are lucky that uh, there isn't actually anyone in the family that's going to be alone at Christmas. Um, yeah. So, you know, even um, uh, our elderly relatives 
are not going to be on their own. So we've all decided to stick within our households and not mix too much over Christmas. But it, it's entirely what makes everyone else comfortable. And it's, it's something that we've all discussed and we're all comfortable with doing. It's a little bit different this year, but um, there's nothing wrong with having a, a slightly different Christmas to the normal Christmas. It's still going to be Christmas. Yeah, that's it. That's it. And just think how happy everyone's going to be next year when they do get to spend Christmas together. So yeah, exactly. You'll be having a Zoom call in the afternoon, I expect, with everyone. Um, yeah, we usually get together once a week anyway by Zoom, all of us. We do a, a weekly quiz uh, just so that we can all check in and, and uh, have a good chat. So we usually all do that anyway. Oh, nice. Very good. So how about the other two? What, what are we doing for Christmas? Um, I don't actually know what I'm doing for Christmas this year at the moment. Um, Last year, I spent it at my auntie's and my parents and siblings all went round. But this year, um, it's a bit up in the air. Um, you know, my, my auntie's not too sure what to do with regards to the rules and regulations and whether it would be the best idea or not. And um, the sad thing for me is um, I, live, I live by myself. And the last thing I want to do, to be honest, is spend Christmas by myself. I've done it before years ago um, and it just it just isn't the same so I'm hoping that um, something will happen I can at least spend it with some family somewhere even if it's just a few people and nothing yeah. major I think that's what it's about the main thing for me when it comes to Christmas is the gathering yeah. and uh, the coming together so um, I'd love to um, be around family and friends um, it's such a tradition and it's important to me as also family is so and the, and the giving side to it also. So I'm hoping that something will happen. But at the moment, nothing, unfortunately. Yeah. Well, I, I'm in the same position as you, that I, I live alone. Um, mm. And I have a, a, sli a slightly different issue for me has been that my parents are both separated and they both want me to go around there for Christmas. So it's sort of that difficult situation now of you get, I'm going to have to pick one or the other to go and spend Christmas with, because obviously I don't want to be breaking the rules and going both and whatever. Um, but I know full well that whichever household I choose to go to, the other one's going to be unhappy that I haven't chose that one. Yeah. So you, you always feel like I want to, I obviously want to, same as you, I want to go and I want to be able to spend Christmas with people. But I feel like no matter what decision I make, it's going to be the wrong one to someone. Mm. So... It, yeah, I think it, I think it's hard, and I think there'll be a lot of people out there at the minute that are going through exactly the same things that you've just said, and I've just said, and Martine said. And I think it's important that y you do what's right for you. I think if if you for you personally, Denzel, I think look, if you, if you really feel like you know what you want to go and spend Christmas with someone, make that clear to your family, and make it clear that actually, do you know what we are within the rules? That is something we are allowed to do, and Christmas isn't going to be the same without seeing you guys and go and do it um for me personally i need to make that decision about which household i'm going to go to and then i just need to tell them look unfortunately with how things have been this year that's the decision that i've got to make and actually in the new year when we can do something perhaps we can do something instead then um with the household that i unfortunately don't get to meet up with but yeah it's about doing what's right for you um i don't think anyone's situation will you, you're never alone you're not the only person going through that so talk it through with your family and then try to decide as a family what you think is best. Um, I think Martin's example is perfect. Discussed it all as a family, decided what was best for the family and then have gone with that. And you seem quite content with your decision that you've made as a family, Martin. So I think that's a really good way to go about it. Um, how about you, Ed? What's your plans? Yeah, no, I think you've just summed it up really well. I think it's, you know, even within some bigger families, you've got to understand each other's situations as well. So, Mine's a little different. I've got quite a small family, so we're able to see each other. Whether we will, we still haven't had that discussion just because, again, uh, whether we run that risk um, or whether we just hold out and wait and see how it plays out again. Um, my attitude towards it is just try, and, just try not to get too stressed out about it and, you know, try and play it down a bit. Like, it's, it's, it's not a big deal. If not, we'll, you know, like you said, there's always next Christmas. There's always, you know, January, February when things are looking a lot brighter, and you can almost 
uh, not replace it, but you, you can in a way where you can all meet up and have a, like do that big family event where everyone's together. So like I said, I just try not to make too big of a deal out of it. Um, yeah. Around this time, it just, I think it's just an unnecessary stress. Yeah, no, definitely. And I think leading on sort of from that, um, obviously anxiety and everything like that is going to be provoked during this period. And anyone obviously who does suffer with anxiety at all, it's going to be a really stressful time for them. And you may find that you've never struggled at all with anxiety, but suddenly making a decision like this makes you feel really anxious. Um, so I just wanted to, to have a little bit of a discussion really about sort of what anxiety means to us, um, sort of the different stages of it, and then sort of the best ways to cope with it um, if people are feeling anxious. So I suppose what, what do you guys sort of understand by anxiety? What, what do we think it is and what do we link it to? I think for myself, anxiety is there's several different versions of anxiety. I think there's being anxious mentally. So before you've even approached a task or a situation, it's already on your mind and you're just really nervous about it, uneasy about the situation, maybe something that needs to be done or said. Um, you can be socially anxious around individuals, whether friends, family, work associates, just being uncomfortable in the environment that you're placed in. Um, and I think into, in relation to the current period that we're in, there's people that are potentially anxious about whether to put themselves in a circumstance where they're around others or not. And um, I do worry that I think depression and, and anxiety could develop for a lot of individuals um, right now. And I think it's a difficult one to get around because sometimes the things that can decrease your anxiety can also increase your anxiety. I think it's hard to sort of take that step, um, yeah, to take that step towards basically getting rid of it and also dealing with it and also speaking out about it. Um, that's my understanding of anxiety anyway. Yeah, I think you've I think you've summed it up pretty perfectly there. In all fairness, um, does anyone else have anything they'd like to add? Or uh, yeah, just just that anxiety is like um, an excessive worrying. It's um, uh, when you have anxiety, it's usually brought on by a, a worry, something that you. It's like a panic attack. It, 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 um, yeah, when definitely. you're worrying about something, um, then it can take over your whole body and as well as being anxious about something you also can get sweaty and have heart palpitations and it can really take over your whole body yeah suddenly it's all you can think about and as the anxiety grows because that grows your feeling of it grows and it just becomes it like you say it's all cumbersome it just literally takes over you doesn't it yeah um, so and the thought of anxiety can make you anxious yeah 100 percent, 100 percent. i think it's a uh, good to remember as well though it's it is normal to feel that especially in certain situations whether it's you know you've got a big event coming up or a big situation that you feel is big i think um, whether it's you know a, a bad past experience you've had and you're about to do a similar thing again and you know you're having you know feeling anxious about that I think it's also important to remember that there's different levels and people feel anxious about different things and understanding and trying to understand in someone's mindset around why they may be feeling anxious about something what triggers that and what you know and trying to deal with that that point not the actual event because I think sometimes you can't avoid certain things that you've got to do it's trying to deal with that feeling leading up to that event to try and calm you down. I think you banged on with that. And I think we've all been in situations where we have felt anxious about going and doing something. And actually, when you do it, it's never as bad as you think it's going to be. Mm. So you've built it up and built it up in your head. And you, it, like Martine says, it ends up taking over you. And that's all you can think about. And then actually, when it comes to the time and you are doing that event, you think, oh, this isn't half as bad as I thought it was going to be. Um, so it's important to remember that when you are feeling anxious, that actually the things that you're feeling anxious about, once you are in that situation, I would say nine times out of 10, it's not going to be as bad as what you think it is. You've built it up in your head that much that actually it starts to consume you. So I think that's a really good point, Ed, actually. Yeah, it's just about everyone, everyone dealing with things differently. So for example, someone 
while we're on the topic of Christmas time, maybe feeling really anxious, like yourself, James, uh, whether you do or don't, just as an example, you may be feeling anxious about that feeling of having or, or being felt like you've had to pick between your mum or your dad going round yeah. to their house. Whereas I don't have that problem. Whereas a, a different situation where, I don't know, someone's got a public speak or it could be something really small to someone else but you know that's someone else's biggest fear that they've ever got so like public speaking is a good one and now we're all having zoom meetings and zoom conversations you know something like that can be really anxious for someone whether it's they've not you've not had a zoom account before or they've not logged on or they're not very good on with technology or they're they're anxious about making a fool of themselves by clicking the wrong button or something like that um i think it's it's really good to to remember that everyone sees things differently and just err on the side of caution when and, and understanding someone's situation if you don't want to be putting them under more pressure because you don't know how they feel about a certain topic or a certain thing yeah yeah definitely so leading on from that what sort of advice would you give to someone who is feeling anxious about a certain situation i would say if possible um to Think of several ways that you can handle the situation that you're in or going to be in and choose the one that's the best solution or the less or the least anxiety provoking solution. Also, um, in terms of, you know, decisions that have to be made, um, I think sometimes you don't always have to follow through with something. So um, I have at times when I'm a bit sort of oh what do I do do I do this do I do that but then sometimes is the options that you have none of them are necessities or things that have to be done so maybe there's there's people out there that could reduce the pressure that they have on their shoulders by just knowing that there's, you're not forced to do anything anyway you can just maybe at times be comfortable by yourself and not sort of have to trick yourself in the deep end for example, as Ed was saying, in terms of people that might not be the most comfortable on Zoom calls or using social medias or meeting up at times, you don't always have to make the decision to do those things if you're not feeling too great about doing them anyway. And immediately you might feel more relaxed about, you know, removing a potential issue from your life, basically. Definitely. Yeah, no, 100%. Um, does anyone else have anything they'd like to add? Yeah. Um... If ever you feel anxious, share your anxieties. Just find someone that you can talk to about them and share them. And it can very often help reduce them when you've shared them with somebody else. Yeah, a hundred, I 100% agree with that. And I think like we were saying before, if you are feeling a little bit anxious about Christmas, I guarantee that the rest of your family and stuff are. So just using yours as an example, Denzel, um, the rest of your family are probably thinking exactly the same but until that conversation takes place yeah. you're all going to keep feeling that way so the sooner the sooner you can bite the bullet so to speak and have that conversation you will feel better for it because you'll come you'll come to a solution with your family um, I hope um, and then hopefully you'll feel a lot better about where you're going to be spending Christmas etc mm. One thing you've just made me realise, um, Ed and James as well, from what you've mentioned, and also Martine too, is um, I think maybe if you could try and just take baby steps towards doing things. So I think if you've got a task, try and break it down um, and minimalise how you're going to go about achieving a task or completing something, even if it is just to message someone. And just start by, like, for example, maybe you could start begin with sending a message um, just to have general conversation to someone. Then maybe a few days later, you could mention what's actually bothering you. Um, then you could eventually maybe then go to having a phone call and potentially, you know, a video call and then maybe meeting up and just take little baby steps towards speaking out and reaching out and achieving things. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. I think that would definitely really help. Um, Ed, anything you'd like to add? Um, I'd say, I almost, yeah, I agree um, with what everyone said. Um, almost the opposite. 
effect of what you've just mentioned Denzel as well is just like just doing it and try not to think about try and distract your mind from it and just do it because like you've mentioned before often of times when it gets to that event or certain thing that you're feeling anxious about and you, and it, you get over it and you've once once it's done and you look back and you're like you can really feel glad that you did it and then mm. the next time it gets better and better and better so the more you do it the less anxious you get about it um yeah i think also there's like certain breathing techniques you can do um yeah that's you know, good. research that online you know there's loads of different ones you can do um and one thing i recently downloaded i think it was from a previous podcast when we actually spoke about it as well was like the car map um and it was yeah. surprised, surprisingly really good um I'm kind of kind of like I'm into that kind of thing with the things they had and it would they had like free advice on there and there was different like calming music and things but that's something that I kind of like listening to anyway <laughs> in an odd way so uh, I, I just thought it was a really good free app that you could get as well I think obviously there were things on there that you could pay for extras and things but there were certain things that were free on there as well um, which were good so yeah, they're, they're sort of my tips, really. I mean, I mean, and like I say, I agree with what everyone said. I think the key to all of this is um, there's no sort of right or wrong with it. It's about what works for you. Yeah, so try, try different techniques. So try a few different things. There are certain breathing techniques. Um, there's a grounding technique that you can do um, with regards to if you're feeling anxious, so helping ground yourself back into the room by thinking of things that you can taste and smell etc uh, which again can be researched online um, but it is a, it's about finding what works for you so that when you are starting to feel anxious you know what's going to help you some people will need to take baby steps some people will need to just go and do it right there and then because that's going to help them there is no right or wrong with that um, and just because one technique works for one person doesn't mean it's going to work for the next so with regards to Ed and Denzel, complete opposite sides of the scale. Denzel's going to take things slowly, he's going to do baby steps to make sure it works. Ed's going to jump straight in and make sure that it, he does it straight away because that's going to get it off his mind. It doesn't matter which one you choose, but choose the one that's right for you. So experiment with it, try different things and work out basically what decreases your anxiety. That's what it's all about. Yeah, for me, for me um, if it's a task that I've got to do, uh, then I need to be prepared that that being prepared for a task uh, lessens the anxiety for me so um, if it's a task that I've got to do then I'll need to prepare and if it's for something like Christmas because Christmas can be quite ov overwhelming because there's quite a lot to to organize at Christmas um, then I need to just take one day at a time and I need to split it into um, smaller segments so it's not all too much in one go. So you can sort of adapt that um, to anything, to any task or any, anything that's um, causing your anxiety. Yeah, definitely. I definitely agree with that, Martine. Great stuff. So cheers for that, guys. So this week, we're just going to leave with an overall tip from all of us, uh, which touches on basically what we've all been saying um, during this podcast. But that is, if you are struggling with anything, if you are struggling with anxiety, with a decision you need to make, reach out and speak to someone, whether that's in person, with a sort of social distance walk, or whether that's over Zoom or a phone call or whatever, just reach out to someone because a problem shared is a problem halved so it really will help you so yeah if you are struggling do that this is the last podcast that we'll be doing before christmas so i'm just going to go around um and everyone's just going to wish you a merry christmas so coming to you martine yeah um have a lovely christmas everybody and it might be different to the usual christmas that you usually have but you can still enjoy it so have a lovely christmas Oh, lovely. And Denzel? So for all of our listeners, I've got a little task for you all and also for ourselves and myself, actually. Um, I want you all just to try and think of something, something that you can do differently throughout the next 12 months that you potentially haven't done in the previous 12 months. Something that can improve the position that you're in, that can enhance the way that you're feeling and create more positivity. Just think, what can I do differently to help myself a little bit more? And just just set that set that as a task for yourselves to do at some point during 2021. Yeah, have a wicked Christmas, guys and girls. I really hope you have a wicked Christmas. I hope you have a wicked New Year's. 
And for me, when a new year comes, it's almost like a new start. So just be as positive as you can. Hopefully this next year, 2021, will be much better than 2020. So yeah, just enjoy the smile as much as you can. <laughs> <laughs> and look forward to the future. Great stuff. And Ed? Yeah, I can't say it better than that, to be honest. Um, I'd just say for those that obviously are working over Christmas as well, everyone's thinking of you and um, that's it really from me. Have a great Christmas. Yeah, great stuff. Thanks, Ed. And finally from me, stay safe, everyone. Um, I hope you have a wonderful Christmas. Thank you to list for listening to all of our podcasts. Um, we really do enjoy doing it for you guys, so we hope you get a lot from it. Um, Merry Christmas, and we will speak to you in the new year. So-